It's crime and punishment time. No, no crimes will be committed, nor punishments given. We're just going to talk about crime and punishment in history. Well, not even that. You see, I was working on some videos for crime and punishment the other day, and I saw all these key terms keep coming up, and I remembered how I kept forgetting these terms at GCSE, and how important they are for understanding the topic. The thing with crime and punishment is it's all about change and continuity. So you have to be able to understand what that is, and also to have the vocabulary to express the nature of different crimes and punishments, so that you can say how they changed or continued. Anyway, I was thinking about this and I was like, you know what might be a good idea? If I made a video talking through some of these key terms so that you can go into the topic understanding what you need to be able to pick out, and so you can have the vocab ready for when you need to write some tasty essays. So this is Crime and Punishment, Key Terms. Seeing as we were just talking about crime and punishment being all about change and continuity, let's talk about change and continuity. Change is where something changes, it becomes different. Say for instance, in a historical context, this could be where it's illegal to like the colour pink until suddenly, in 1977, a law is passed making liking pink legal. This would be a change. Also, just a note for the gullible ones out there, that's completely ahistorical. It was never illegal to like the colour pink. A turning point is the point at which something changes, so in this example, 1977 would be a turning point. Continuity is where something stays the same, or similar. It might be illegal to like the colour pink in the 11th century, and by the 19th century it's still illegal to like the colour pink, so you could say there was continuity between these two periods in this sense. It's important to note, however, that there can be continuity in one sense and a change in another. A turning point can also be a turning point for one thing and not for another. So, for instance, if it was also illegal to like the colour orange, then 1977 would be a turning point for the colour pink, but not for the colour orange. So you could say that there was a change because now you can like the colour pink, but overall there was continuity because there were still colours which it was illegal to like. So let's look at some different types of crimes. It's important to note that there can be some crossover. A crime could be both a crime against authority and a crime against property, for instance. Crimes against authority are crimes which threaten the social structure of a society. If a peasant deliberately started a fire on his lord's land, this would be a crime against authority, as the lord's crops and buildings could be burnt down, which would reduce the lord's power and thus threaten the social structure. This would therefore be an example of a crime against authority. One of the most key examples of crimes against authority is treason. Treason is the act of betraying the king. This could be, for instance, by helping his enemies. High treason is a type of treason which is specifically against the king himself. Treason treason can be simply betraying the king by betraying one of his officials, maybe plotting to kill one of his officials. High treason is betraying the king specifically, for instance, plotting to kill the king. Crimes against property involve taking or damaging someone else's stuff, such as theft, robbery or arson. Moral crimes are actions that don't cause anyone physical harm, but things a society sees as indecent behaviour, such as having sex outside marriage. Social crimes are crimes which are technically illegal, but society doesn't disapprove of. Say, for instance, when poaching first became a crime, as hunting had always been legal, most people didn't see anything wrong with poaching, making it a social crime. So those are the different types of crime you need to know. Now let's look at some punishments. Punishments fall into three categories, although, again, it's important to note that a single punishment can fall into more than one category. These categories are retribution, rehabilitation, and deterrence. A punishment which is a form of retribution would be one where the person being punished suffers. It's essentially the justice system getting revenge on the person for what they've done. A really simple example would be if you punch someone in the face and you're punished for this by being punched in the face. But the thing with retribution is it doesn't always have to be equal. You might punch someone in the face, and your punishment could then be getting hit in the face with a chair. That's still retribution. A deterrent is a punishment designed to stop people from committing the same crime as the person being punished. So now you've been hit in the face with a chair because you punched someone in the face. You have lots of massive permanent scars on your face. When people see you in the street, they are reminded of what happened to you as a result of your crime. And, in theory, they go, I don't want that to happen to me. I guess I should make sure I don't punch anyone in the face. A punishment classed as rehabilitation 
is one which seeks to make the person who committed the crime a better person. So you've punched a person in the face, but rather than being hit in the face with a chair, you're made to go and do community service, and to talk to people who have been punched in the face before, so you understand why it's bad to punch people in the face. The hope is that once you've served your punishment, you won't go on to punch anyone in the face again. That's rehabilitation. Okay, so what are capital and corporal punishment? These are two examples of types of punishment. Capital punishment is punishment by death, and a capital crime is a crime which is punishable by death. Corporal punishment, however, is punishment which causes a person physical harm or pain, such as maiming or branding. A trial by ordeal is what it says on the tin. It's a trial where someone has to go through some kind of ordeal, and the result determines their guilt or not. Supposedly, it's a way of God casting his judgement. An example would be trial by hot iron, where the accused has their hand burnt by a hot iron and bandaged. That's the ordeal bit. A few days later, they check up on the hand, and if it's healed well, then God has judged them not guilty. But if it hasn't, then God says they're guilty. Whilst there are all sorts of different ordeals that can be used, the overall concept is the same. Ordeal happens, one outcome equals God says guilty, the other equals God says innocent. The clergy are the church people, heresy is the crime of going against the church, and secular means independent of religion. So not against it, just separate from it. Like how our modern day government doesn't command that we all go to church on Sunday, but it also doesn't tell everyone to denounce God on a regular basis. It's just like, you do you, go worship or not worship whoever you want, we have other things to worry about. To decriminalise is to make something no longer a criminal offence. To pardon is to allow someone to get away with a crime unpunished, normally something that only very important people can do, such as a king. Penal is anything relating to matters of punishment, not what you're thinking. A hate crime is a crime motivated by prejudice against a victim's race, gender, sexual orientation, or a disability they have. And finally, collective responsibility is where a group of people are all responsible for the actions of one another, meaning that if a member of a group commits a crime and no one is brought forward, all the members of the group are punished. Alright then, hopefully that clears some things up. If you understood all the concepts and key terms here, then you should be able to look at the topic of crime and punishment through the right angle and with enough understanding that you can get some top-notch marks and write some awesome answers on your paper. Crime and punishment, key terms. Thanks for watching, don't forget to like, subscribe and tell all your friends. This is something a bit new and type of video I've never tried before, so I'd appreciate you telling me in the comments if you found it helpful. That being said, I appreciate all people in the comments. Don't forget that you can find me on Twitter at a long time ago underscore YT and also if you like my videos that much that you want to give me some money then you can head over to Patreon. There's a link in the corner and failing that you can go to patreon.com forward slash a long long time ago. We're sad, yay holler.